on my way up to the Orkneys, uh, to uh, North Ronnersey, to film the amazing seaweed-eating sheep that uh, live on the foreshore there. My name's Hunter Pease. Um, I live in England, in North Hertfordshire, in North London. And my family, my father's family, are from Orkney, from the island of uh, Stromsey, which is just a little bit south from here. They were farmers. Uh, and my grandfather, uh, as well as keeping cattle, had some of Orkney sheep. The Orkney sheep uh, are quite unique, and this is the reason I'm here. Well, the North Ronaldsay sheep are part of the Northern Shortail group, which are the ancient breeds of sheep. Ancestors probably originated between the Black and the Caspian Seas. Probably the North Ronaldsay are the purest of the ancient breeds of sheep, uh, as shown by some DNA studies. So on the island here, the North Ronaldsay sheep are unique because some of them live almost entirely on seaweed, which is a most unusual diet uh, for any animal, let alone sheep. Uh, the males stay on the shore for the whole year and the females um, are brought in for lambing in April and then put out again in August, September and spend the winter on the shore. The seaweed comes in in larger quantities when the weather is stormy, so the sheep are at their best in December, that time of year. The Females and the males all run together all the time, but most mating occurs early in December and a large percentage, probably over 90% of the lambs, are born in the last week in April, first week in May. Because of the improvement of sheep breeds, commercial pressures and so on, the original indigenous Orkney sheep, or more commonly known as the North Ronaldsay sheep, uh, have uh, become extremely uh, rare and there's probably less than 300 registered ewes in the British Isles. But up here on the island of North Ronaldsay, which is their natural home, there's something over 2,000 and they live exclusively on the foreshore. In 1832, the islanders, uh, under the direction of the laird of the island, uh, constructed a stone dike around the whole of the perimeter of the island, some 13 miles, and the sheep were cast to the foreshore. There's not a lot for them to eat there, uh, apart from seaweed, but the Orkney sheep have been living on seaweed for perhaps up to 6,000 years. Uh, so they're well used to that, and something like 80% uh, of their diet comes from seaweed. The seaweeds that they eat, they have preferences. Uh, it's been shown that probably what they like best is dulse, the red seaweed, palmaria palmata, uh, followed by alaria, uh, which is a brown seaweed. Both of those seaweeds have a pretty soft texture. If you have a sick sheep, then if they don't eat uh, dulse, then there's not much hope of them recovering. So if I get a sick sheep, I go and find some dulse on the seashore and in old literature from the 1600s, dulse was reckoned to cure anything except the black death. They don't eat mainly dulse and alaria because there isn't enough of it. The main uh, seaweed in the diet is laminaria, just because there's a lot of it there. Obviously it's tougher than the other two seaweeds and if the sheep's old and its teeth's going, then it's not going to thrive so well on that. What they don't tend to eat are the fucus species, which um, are supposedly taste bitter because they've got brominated phenols in them. The seaweed diet um, leads to special problems if you keep these sheep on grass. It's been shown that it takes a few weeks for the rumen um, microorganism to adapt to the change in diet. 
but even so, once they get onto grass, the main problem if you keep North Ronsay sheep is they tend to go down with copper poisoning even when there isn't very much copper in the environment. Because they live on seaweed, or have adapted to live on seaweed, they have a high absorptive system for copper. There isn't, it isn't that the seaweed doesn't contain very much copper, it does. It's often in the region of about uh, nine parts per million copper. But because seaweed contains things like alginates and uh, uh, sulfates and so on, they, the sheep tend to have to have developed a, a strong absorptive system to get the copper away from binding to other things in the seaweed. So when they put onto grass, then there are problems because they still absorb copper in large quantities. And although the grass hasn't got any more copper in than the seaweed, they tend to go down with copper poisoning. There's a similar problem which hits the rams. They similarly seem to have a super absorptive system for phosphorus and rams, particularly if they're castrated, go down with uroliviasis, which is where they get stones, calcium, magnesium, phosphate stones in the uh, tubes from the kidney to the bladder. And this is a very painful condition. In 1973, the Rare Breed Survival Trust was set up in the UK to protect our primitive breeds of, of uh, cattle and sheep and pigs. And one of the rarest of the sheep was the, rare, was the North Ronald's A sheep. There was concern at that time with the exploration of the, the North Sea oil that a possible oil spill on the foreshore of North Ronald's A could wipe out the, the sheep uh, entirely. So, the RBSD, one of their first conservation projects, was to move some 200 of the sheep to another island within the Orkney group so that we had a, they had a reserve flock. And this was very successful. And after uh, a, a few years, sheep were moved from that island down to mainland Britain to, in small groups to sheep conservationists who kept them and bred from them. Uh, this proved to be a very wise decision because in uh, 2001 we had a, a very severe outbreak of foot and mouth to kidney disease in the UK and the fact that they were groups of uh, uh, sheep were widely spread throughout uh, the UK was a, an insurance really against the possibility of losing uh, the entire flock of North Ronald's Days. On mainland Britain of course the, the, the sheep eat grass, there is not really large amounts of seaweed so the only really true North Ronald's A's are the ones on the island of North Ronald's A. But they are at risk because of the dike, the sheep dike is also at risk because of the severe weather that we've had, particularly over the last, last two or three winters, but over the last 40 years there seems to be more and more severe gales which has brought about quite a lot of destruction of the, of the sheep dike. And without the dike, then the sheep would, would then move into the middle of the island danger of possible crossbreeding with other animals and we'd lose the purity of the North Ronald's A sheep. The island has seen quite a diminution of uh, uh, population uh, as many uh, of the outer islands of Scotland and uh, Ireland and various other, other countries and uh, we've seen now I think something like less than 60 people live on the island of North Ronald's A and they don't really have the physical or the financial resource to be able to maintain the sheep dike in the, the manner in which it needs to be maintained to keep the sheep on the foreshore. So a number of uh, conservationists got together and set up a charity called the Orkney Sheep Foundation. This was set up in the early part of this year and its official launch is being held on Tuesday of this week in a couple of days time during the Orkney Science Festival and this uh, will be looking to raise significant sums of money towards the restoration of the sheep dike which is a historic listed monument uh, it has the same category a listing as edinburgh castle and hopefully we'll be able to raise funds from those sort of organizations possibly based on the heritage lottery fund and some hopefully rich benefactors to enable us to work with the islanders to create a, a program for the restoration of the sheep dike. By restoring the dike, 
we hope to secure the future of the North Ronald's Day sheep.